Hi everyone, I'm Gertie. Welcome back to Gertie's World. So this month we have an amazing episode coming for you later in the month. You are going to love it. But to tide you over for now, I'm going to give you my top 10 tips that I wish I had known when I started sewing. So my first tip is something that my mom taught me when I first learned how to sew when I was little, and that is that you never want to pull the thread out of the machine this way, okay? So if you want to change the color of your thread, what you need to do is clip it right here and then pull this side out through the needle. And the reason for that is if you pull it up that way, it's gonna create a lot of lint on the inner workings of your machine, which is going to cause it to need to be maintained more often. My second tip is pay attention to the take up lever. That is this little silver hook right here and I feel like it doesn't get the attention that it deserves. When people are having problems with their machine, they always look at the bobbin, okay? So especially because the bobbin can cause a lot of nesting and threads tangling under there. A lot of times the reason for that can be that your thread is not properly threaded into the take up lever. So when you're threading your upper thread, make sure you go down, back up, and you need to go in and then out on the take up lever. And you need to make sure that your thread is actually threaded through that hole in the top of the take up lever. It's very common, especially when you first start sewing, you're just doing this really quickly. You're not sure what you should be looking for. And that's something you really have to have. Okay. If your thread is not in the take up lever, it will create a huge nest in the bottom of your thread. So I'm going to keep threading here through my needle. And we're all threaded. Okay, my third tip would be that you're always going to want to start with your threads to the back of the machine. I am guilty of not paying much attention to this. If you've watched my sewing videos, you probably know I don't pay that much attention to it. But it's a really good idea to have these to the back and to kind of grasp onto them at the beginning so that you get a nice, neat start to your seam. So my next tip involves starting and finishing your seams, okay? You always wanna start at the very edge of your fabric right here. You're gonna backstitch at the beginning and end of a seam. When you're stitching, if you have trouble keeping your stitches straight or your seam straight or looking at your seam allowance, I always tell beginners, don't look at the needle going up and down. You'll probably make yourself dizzy and you'll get off track. So I'm looking at the line right over here at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, when I finish my seam, another really important thing is you never want to sew without fabric underneath your needle. A serger is totally different. You just chain off, right? But with a sewing machine, you do not want to create a chain, okay? It's not good for your machine. It creates those tangles in the inner workings of your machine. So you're going to go to the very end, and if you tend to overshoot, you can use your hand wheel here. Then you're going to backstitch, okay? And then you can end. Now, my next tip has to do with the take up lever again so overlooked. Okay, you want to make sure that your take up lever when you end is all the way at the top. Okay, and that means that your needle is as far up as it can go. Now, this next tip is related, which is you only want to turn the hand wheel towards you. Never turn the hand wheel away from you. It's not good for your machine. It wants to go towards you. Okay, so always turn it towards you. Now, when you're finishing this seam, your take up lever is all the way at the top, and then you can lift up your presser foot, pull this out, and then trim nice and closely. My other tip, this is another one that I avoid all the time and ignore myself, is that you want to trim every time you finish sewing a seam. So I would go back to the beginning and trim those threads as well. Again, I am guilty of not following that rule pretty often. Okay, my next tip has to do with your bobbin. Okay, this is a front loading bobbin, not a drop in bobbin. This machine is very old fashioned. So a lot of times people forget which way to put the bobbin in. And 
the way that I, this is actually the way that I learned to teach people, not the way that I learned myself. And I think of it every time I put a bobbin now, is that you want it to look like a P for perfect, okay? So the thread should go off to the left of the bobbin and it should look like the tail of a P. So if you forget, remember, you wanna do your bobbin P for perfectly. Okay. Load that in again. All right. My next two tips have to do with needles. And the first one is how often you should be changing your machine needle. And the answer is way more than you are because you need to change that needle every time you're sewing a different type of fabric. So let's say you sewed the Peter Pan Bolero last month in a stable knit, and this month you're sewing the Rita Blouse in a lace fabric. Two totally different types of fabric that need different types of needles. So I recommend having on hand a good selection of universal needles, Microtex, jersey, top stitching, just next time you go to Joann's or your local sewing store, just stock up. You always wanna have a good array of needles on hand in different sizes as well. My last tip is a big one. It's a question that I get all the time, which is what type of machine should I buy? And my question, my answer, my answer to that question is to invest in the best quality you can or find an older machine with all metal parts. I prefer a mechanical machine like this Bernina I've been using for probably 12 years. It's a 1008. I wrote about it on my old blog. Um, I wrote about when I bought it. I wrote about it two years later and why it was still working for me. And now here we are probably 12 years later and it's been a really solid investment for me. It was expensive at the time, but I feel like it's really served me well. Things I like about it are, it's like I said, very basic, good, quality metal parts instead of the really cheap plastic machines that you're going to find at the chain stores. And you really, for garment sewing, you really only need a couple of stitches, a straight stitch and maybe a zigzag. It's nice to have a good buttonhole, which this machine does have. But other than that, you're really just looking for good, solid quality with your sewing. You don't even need a computerized machine. You don't need a ton of stitches. You just need the basic stitches and you need them to be done well. So if you're just starting out, my advice would be to see if your grandma, your aunt, someone has an older metal machine hanging out in their attic or their basement. Almost everyone does. You can take it to your local, sewing machine service shop, get it maintained, and it will probably sew so beautifully and last you a lot longer than some of the cheaper plastic machines that get end up getting thrown out after a year or two because they just don't last like the old ones do. Old ones do.